Marlon said, is it true then? Wally looked away. Is it true that you killed yourself, Wally? Wally leaned forward with a mischievous grin. What planet is closest to the sun? Marlon repeated it to himself. A trick question, he wondered? A hint about the suicide? A way to dodge the matter entirely? Marlon answered, Mercury. Furthest? Are you patronizing me? Marlon stood, posture erect. Sir, I take that as an insult. Marlon pulled an imaginary glove from his non-existent breast pocket and slammed it across Wally's face from a foot or so away. Well out of reach, Wally still took the slap with his head snapping to one side and then the other. He looked back at Marlon and assumed an on-guard stance, legs splayed with one hand holding an unseen foil and the other dangling behind for balance. On guard, Marlon said, taking the same position. He advanced with a cut to Wally's head and could almost hear the blades clink and scrape. Wally said Mambo with a pari en second. Samba, Marlon retorted, fainting left. Tango. Wally advanced with a perfect lunge and a cut to the chest, but Marlon's mind went blank as he searched for the response. Wally's trap was sprung and their words locked. Wally said, Flamenco, you putz. Damn you, Scarlet Wimpernell. They pushed away from each other, swords slicing the stagnant air as Marlon drove Wally back. Wally said, Teapot Dome Scandal. Marlon deceived Wally's parry, remaining on the offensive. 1920. 22. Marlon felt Wally's blade cut across the muscle of his thigh, but it was merely a flesh wound. Marlon continued his advance. Moby Dick. 1851. Aha! Marlon dealt Wally a flurry of cuts to the head and chest, nearly pinning him to the wall. 1850. 51, I'm afraid. Wally's parry en compte halted Marlon's advance. You can check it out. I think you have a copy around here somewhere. McKinley assassinated? 1901. In the style of a classic Bond villain, Wally said, Very good, Mr. Bud. Marlon delighted in Wally's choice. In what he always felt was a pretty good Sean Connery impersonation, all bubbling spit and meaty throat, Marlon answered, Well then, Dr. Peepers, perhaps you can list all seven dwarves. Wally stepped into his attack, a broad strike of the blades for every dwarf's name. Doc, clack, dopey, clang, happy, sleepy, bashful, grumpy. The names ran dry. Wally freezing before delivering the seventh strike. Marlin relished the opening. Now who's the putz? His muttered chuckle had particular venom as he poised his own blade. But before he could deliver that fateful strike, Wally said, Sneezy. Marlin's blade was diverted in its lethal course, nearly sent flying out of his hand. Wally said, Victory is mine, before lowering his sword and thrusting his chest like the hero of his childhood fantasies. Now Marlin had to step in the role of villain. So he raised his sword on Wally and ran him through, piercing the heart. Wally turned to Marlin with wide eyes and a terrified quiver. He gasped, clutching the blade, voice creaking. But why? Marlin pulled his sword from Wally's chest with a squishy sound effect. To prove a point, Marlin said as Wally fell to the floor, nobody can take a fall like me. There, there is in this thing, uh, for instance, uh, so much of uh, the interplay between them is them actually doing little improvised bits uh, that really reveal a great deal. It seems like, well, the thing you read about the sword fight, for instance, uh, which and the seven dwarfs, and there's a whole other thing where there's this imagined football game, and there's a, another thing where they are, uh, they're talking, while he talks about how his love for butterflies and motorcycles and all those things that you never attach to Wally Cox, because apparently he was nothing like what he appeared on t television in the movies. I mean, he was just a completely, and that was a, a completely made up persona. And that seems to carry into the play because when they get together, they keep making up other people to interact with each other, to bring out points that help Brando solve whatever this crisis is. Exactly right. So where did right. you get that from? <laughs> it just sort of lent itself to it. It came, it came out of the concept of having these two guys who were both actors, who both did, who were known for kibitzing around. It just sort of... It was in there, it was endemic to it, you know? Uh, in fact, when I first decided to write the play, the only reason I did it was because I knew I could do a lot of lively, colorful, action-filled things, that it wouldn't be boring. Mm -hmm. theater, theater can be dull, plays can be dull. You have to write them with a real eye toward keeping them lively, keeping them moving. And this, this project I just knew with all the, with their, their sword fighting and their football games and their word play and their mind games and all these bits and things that there would just be plenty of stage stuff. 
Yeah, but you that know. all but you managed to carry all of that over to the written word in the book because the book has the same the life. Book, the book has the same and, life. Yeah. And for that, I mean, it, it's like you know, well, let me touch you because you're magic. You know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I yeah. don't know how you did that. It's fabulous reading. I Thank mean, you. it's great play to watch. I've seen it on tape, and not because I'm in it, but I've seen it, and it's it's very entertaining. But to actually uh, go to the book and read the book and see that same life on the page is, is quite remarkable. Thank you. And we're tired at. Yeah, and I, I have to tell you, uh, there's a little something about this guy. Also on tip to it for TV .com, if you click over, you'll find a, uh, a an information corner, and in that information corner, there's a half hour of this guy telling you how to write, because he not only knows how, he knows how to teach it. Now, where did when did you find that you had this talent to not only write but to also to tell other people how to do it? It came from years of studying it, of course, and then telling it to people. So, so many, you know, my brother wrote a book, his first novel, a couple years ago, and he came to me and he said, what is the three-act structure? Break this down for me, help me learn it. And I, I told him pretty much what I, what I do in my seminar, you know, what the three-act structure is, using films as a way to illustrate the points, modern films. Um, it's, it makes perfect sense to me. I've told it to so many of my friends who want to be screenwriters, and I've just gone through with them so many times that I felt like I just... Already had the, I already had it down. I already yeah, knew well, it, you know? well, well, you communicated um, it beautifully. Thank you. It's it's, it's concise. Something I love to talk yes. about. Oh yeah, it's really very good. When you that's, were, if I may, that's called right makes my stronger structure in storytelling, right here on Two Hip for TV. <laughs> when uh, you when I was researching Wally, I did what you you did and went and talked to people who knew him. Now from Hollywood Squares, uh, Karen Valentine, who oh, she and 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 him and uh, Wally and Paul Lynn used to go to dinner every Thursday night between tapings, and so she told me Wally Cox stories, which I was able to then in, in bring that flavor to to the role, and then I also talked to Les Roberts who was one of the producers of Hollywood Squares, yeah, yes. and he told me stories about Wally Cox, and then later said, yes, you captured you know, the essence of the guy without doing an imitation of it. Thank you, Les yeah. Roberts. Thank you, Karen Valentine, America's sweetheart. <laughs> you know, we uh, dedicated the video to Karen Valentine and Peter Marshall, just, to, just as a tip of the hat to them. Yes. If you ever see the DVD, you'll see their their names at the end, and, and, and well deserved. And sure. you can buy that DVD of the play. Besides watching it here on Two It for TV, that you can That's buy it true. on. You can buy it on Amazon.com. And it's available now. Uh, 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 you got it on your website? No, you can you can you can buy you can go through my website to get to Amazon.com. FletcherRoden.com is my website. You can read uh, samples of my work. You can see my paintings, my videos of my various musical performances. Right makes might also and. Um, Keep up on the news of what I'm doing next, and, what and you have to. you have written uh, other things. I have written other and things. They are this well. This shirt I'm wearing is Stump the Band from the slasher film Stump the Band that I uh, carry a story by credit on. My friend Robbie Rist produced it and also did the musical super, uh, supervising. It won seven awards on the independent film uh, festival circuit and books. And uh, I wrote a novella called The Last, uh, the, called The Trial of Davy Crockett, which is about. Uh, it's a speculative novella like, uh, Mar like Last Tango with Marlon, only it's Generalissimo Santa Anna and Davy Crockett discussing the ins and outs of the Texian Revolution at the fall of the Alamo. I hate to sound like a broken record, because a lot of people out there don't even know what a record is anymore. I hate to sound like a stuck CD, but <laughs> <laughs> I do encourage you to get the book Last Tango with Marlon by Fletcher Roden. It's wonderfully written. It's a delightful read, and you're going to have more fun with it, and you're going to wind up handing it to one of your friends and saying, you got to read this. This is really terrific. And I want to thank you so much for being here with us today, and I want to thank you people for being here with us today. Keep on coming back, because we're going to try to get as many interesting and different kind of authors on this show as we possibly can, because, uh, listen, there's a whole lot of the other ones that you know about, but the ones that you don't know about, really can open your eyes about a whole lot of things. Thanks so very much, and we'll see you soon on Authors, 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 or Authors Up, or Authors Alley, or whatever we wind up calling this. Thing. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>